I don't know about y'all, but I believe that God still cares about unity in the body of Christ. I believe that he absolutely cares how we treat one another, how we talk to one another, how we talk about one another. And yes, that extends into the online space, into social media, into the world of YouTube. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today and share with you God's heart for unity amongst his people. Because y'all, there's a lot going on online. And that's what I have in the back of my head as I'm sharing this. That's kind of the focus here. There's There's a lot happening in the name of God, being said in the name of God, that's not actually pleasing to God. You know, there's many out there that are actually sowing discord amongst brothers, and they themselves are deceived, thinking that they're doing some service for the Lord or for Christianity, but it's actually driving people further apart and further away. I'm deviating from what we've been doing on the channel. We've been going through the book of 1 John, and in our last video, we went through 1 John 2, 7 through 11, which talks about loving our brother. And the one who claims he's in the light, but he hates his brother, that person is actually still in darkness. And as I was going through this, the Lord just kept dealing with me about this, because John is talking about the new commandment in John 13, 34, that Jesus gives them, that we would love one another just as I I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And we went through that. If you didn't see that video, I'll link it below in the description. But guys, the Lord has just continued to deal with me about this and his desire for unity in the body. I'm not going to lie. I got sucked into some content online that presented itself as Christian. But as I continued to consume it, I noticed that the fruits that were welling up in me, the fruits in my life were rotten. They were not good. And I had to stop consuming certain pieces of content because of that. The Lord started to deal with me about that. So at the end of this video, I'm going to give you eight rotten fruits that you can be aware of, that you can look out for and say, hey, is this content producing? this in my heart and in my life. And maybe it's something that we need to put down and consider turning away from. But I want to go back first, starting in John 13, 35, and remind you, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Remember, he did not say if you have all prophetic powers, if you operate in the gifts of the Spirit, if you can cast out demons and heal people, or even if you have perfect knowledge of the Greek and the Hebrew, you fully understand the scriptures, you fully understand Bible prophecy, and say you have the whole thing memorized. It doesn't matter. That's not how the whole world will know us. The whole world will know that we belong to him if we have love for one another. Now, all those things are good, but that's not what he said right here. He says, if we have love for one another. So let's look at some other scriptures here that show us God's heart for unity. Psalm 33, David writes a song. He says, behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It's like precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down the collar of his robes. Now, what is David referencing here? He's actually referencing Exodus chapter 30. I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can go through this and look. But he's talking about this anointing oil and incense here where God gives them this concoction to put together uh, this mixture of oil that they're used to anoint things. It's a blessing It's an anointing, and it's specific and it's special. This is a holy anointing oil that should not be recreated, okay? And David compares this special precious oil, this unique oil, this blessing, this anointing of God to brothers who dwell in unity. Wow, that is special. And we need to pay attention to things like this. He also gives us another picture. He says, it is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. Now, I had to look this up. I don't know what Hermon is, but it's Mount Hermon. And apparently the dew would fall in this place in a really unique way. And it would make it very green and luscious. And it's this mountain sitting in the middle of the desert. So you had this green mountain with all this brown desert around it. So it stuck out like a sore thumb. So David has given us this image here saying that when brothers dwell in unity, it sticks out like a sore thumb. It's unique. It's precious. It's blessed of the Lord. It's anointing. For there in that place, the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. 
There's so many people who want the blessing, who are trying to operate in blessing, but they're putting their brother and sister in Christ down. It's a dog-eat-dog trying to put other people down to elevate themselves. That's not the way of the Lord. That's not the heart of the Father. Look what Jesus prays in John chapter 17. This is the high priestly prayer. This is Jesus praying to the Father. And we're going to look at verses 19 through 23. He says, And for their sake I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. Talking about us, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they, talking about us, also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Unity. I in them and you in me, that they may be become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and loved them even as you have loved me. So this is how all people will know that we belong to him, that we have love for one another and another sign to the world that this whole Christianity thing is legitimate and the real deal is that we are unified. We are unified. Now, guys, I'm not talking about like a universalism unity or an ecumenical kind of unity of other religions and other Jesuses. I'm not talking about woke Jesus or political Jesus or the Mormon Jesus. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those who believe in the basic fundamentals of Christianity, right? We have a call to be unified with one another. God cares about unity, Ephesians 4, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, this is Paul writing, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And this is what I am referring to today, unity of the Spirit. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. Guys, I understand there's different beliefs. There's different denominations. We differ on different um, doctrines and views and interpret scripture a different way. But if we are in Christ, there is one body and one spirit. And we have a call to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. He says, Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We have a call to share in this with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty or prideful, but associate with the lowly and never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. What would happen if we thought about what we said before we said it, if we thought about what we typed out before we typed it out, if we thought about what we posted before we posted with this in mind, to do what is honorable in the sight of all. There is a godly way to disagree. There is a mature way to disagree with one another. But are we stopping and thinking about what we're saying? Are we stopping and thinking about the accusations that we're making? Are we actually desiring to do what is honorable and say what is honorable in the sight of all? Are we trying to outdo one another in showing honor? Man, that is my prayer. God, may I consider everything I say and do before I do it. May that be our prayer today, that we would do what is honorable in the sight of all, if possible. So as far as it depends on you, we can't control everybody else, but we can control ourselves. 
live peaceably with all. I want to remind you as well about 1 Corinthians 13, the way of love. It doesn't matter how prophetic you are. It doesn't matter how many spiritual gifts you operate in. It doesn't un- matter how much you understand the Bible, the Greek, the Hebrew, Arabic, whatever it is. It doesn't matter the knowledge that you have. It doesn't matter the things that you do. If you do not have love, it is nothing. It doesn't matter how charitable we are. It doesn't matter even if we are martyrs. We give up ourselves fully, even unto death, but we have not love. We have nothing Love is patient and kind. It does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. When we see our brothers and sisters fall, if something in us is excited or pleased by that or fulfilled or satisfied by that, we have an issue. We have an issue. We need to go before the Lord and say, God, pull that out of me. But love, real love, biblical love, rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Guys, God cares about unity in the body of Christ. He cares about how we treat one another. By this, all people will know that we are His if we have love for one another. And if we are perfectly one, the world is watching Why in the world would I want to convert to Christianity when I see some of the ways people are treating one another online? When I see the bickering, the name calling, the hatefulness, the discord being sown amongst brothers. God hates discord. It's actually listed as an abomination unto him. And we're going to look at that in just a second. But guys, I got sucked into some of these Um, channels, some of this content online that was presenting itself as Christian. And the more I watched it, and it's just people fighting about this, people fighting about that, people getting upset about this and that and the third. And I'm just looking at the comments and people are name calling and mocking and it's sarcastic. And it's like, it's literally just gross. It started to make me feel gross inside and people are calling this Christian. And the world sees this and they're like, why in the world would I want to be a part of that? These people can't even get along for themselves. Do they even believe in the same Jesus? Do they actually believe what they say they believe? Because I don't see it based on the way that they are acting. Guys, I'm going to tell you this. Division is entertaining. And it's become a form of entertainment online. When people are divided, when people argue, when people come at one another, and there's a godly way to handle some of this stuff, guys. I'm not saying that we should just be quiet and stick our head in the sand and ignore bad doctrine, false teaching. I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about the ones that aren't handling things in a godly way. And it's entertaining to some. And people are just commenting. And yeah, they should have said that. They should have said this. Can you believe what this church is doing? Can you believe what this person said? Can you believe how they're treating this guy? Can you believe what this denomination did? Can you believe um, you know, what this group is doing over here and making videos about it? And it's just causing people to divide. So guys, just because something presents itself as Christian doesn't mean it's bearing godly fruit in us, the fruit of the Spirit in us. So here are some of the rotten fruits that you can look out for and you can judge the content by this. Does it create these feelings and emotions in you? Is this the fruit that it's producing in you? Number one, frustration. Are you just agitated, edgy, more than usual? Are you aggravated and agitated with those in your life and those around you? And they're like, man, what's? did he wake up on the wrong side of the bed or what? Frustration. It will come from watching some of this stuff. Or despair, sadness, or even depression. It's discouraging to constantly watch negative, 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 bad, bad, bad. Everything's false. Everything's bad. It leads us to despair sometimes. Number three, hopelessness. Is there any hope for the body of Christ? Why should I even pray? Why even go to church? Why do any of this? This is never going to end. They're always going to be arguing. There's always going to be this view and that view. You see what I mean? Hopelessness. Number four, anxiety. It makes us anxious. We don't know what to believe. This person sounds right, but that person sounds right. Now I don't know what to believe. 
Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Get in the word of God yourself. Spend time with the Lord yourself. If it's causing anxiety, it's not Christian. It's not from God. It is a different spirit. Number five, anger at people other than the adversary. Ephesians chapter six tells us we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against people. We're fighting against the demonic. We're fighting against a spiritual world. Okay, so some of this content can cause us to start getting mad at people, to look at people as the enemy, to look at a denomination as the enemy, to look at a group of people as the enemy, to look at a political party as the enemy. Do you see what I'm saying? It's subtle, but it stirs up anger, and you'll start seeing it in the comment section. I can't believe it. I can't believe that, which brings me to number six. It's a potential cause for sin and stumbling. It stirs up this need to gossip. Can you believe that? I can't believe that. This person shouldn't do that, or this is what they should do instead. It encourages crude talk, crude joking, sarcasm, mocking, scoffing, things of that nature. So you have to be careful. If it stirs that in you and you want to joke and laugh along at picking at somebody else that's supposedly a brother or sister in Christ, Avoid it. That's not from the Lord. Number seven, division. It stirs up division in the body of Christ. Proverbs chapter six says, There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination unto him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. This is an abomination to God. That is serious. Do you know what discord means? Causing division amongst one another, causing people to argue, causing people to bicker, causing people to fight. You're putting out content. You're saying things and doing things that cause this amongst brothers. You're not striving to live peaceably with all. Titus chapter 3, 9 through 11 says, avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. As for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful. He is self condemned. Romans 16, 17 says, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. What is the doctrine that you have been taught? Yes, it's obviously the gospel of Jesus Christ, but is it not also what Paul writes in Ephesians 2 through 4? With all humility and gentleness, with patience and bearing with one another in love, be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Is it not Romans chapter 12 as well? All of this that we already read. And it says for those who cause these divisions, what do we do? We avoid them. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do today. Avoid them. Turn away. Turn it off. And you'll see this stuff start to dissipate. Number eight, it can cause a root of bitterness to well up in your heart. We just looked at Hebrews chapter 14, but let's keep reading. It says, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and by it many become defiled. Remember, biblical love is not resentful. Resentfulness leads to bitterness. Bitterness leads to unforgiveness. And all these things start snowballing into hatred and anger towards one another. So we have to watch out for that root of bitterness. If you feel this welling up in your heart, my friend, that is not of the Lord. And lastly, number nine, I actually had nine instead of eight. Sorry about that. Rivalries. It creates rivalries between brothers in Christ. Galatians 5.19 tells us the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions. He links all of this stuff. He groups this in with these sins. This is serious stuff, y'all. Rivalries is a work of the flesh. 
envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're watching and consuming content that stirs any of this up in your heart, I urge you, my friend, to find something else to watch. This stuff is dangerous and it will draw you down a road where you think you're doing something in the name of God. You think you're a part of something holy and righteous, but actually it wells up and puffs up pride and self-righteousness. It causes us to look at our brother with hatred in our heart, with anger in our heart. Be reminded of the heart of our Savior. Be reminded of the heart of the Father for His children. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And let me leave you with these last two scriptures. This is the fruit that we as believers in Jesus Christ want to see and should see in our life. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So may we do everything that we can to walk in the Spirit and make sure this is the fruit that's being produced in our lives. And lastly, Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. If you're still here and watching, I just want to say thank you for being here and watching this. Would you please stay in prayer for the body of Christ and pray for unity amongst God's people? I hope this encouraged you today. I hope this helped you out in some way or another. And if you find value in this channel and appreciate what we're doing here at Glasshouse TV and you do want to support us financially on a monthly basis, you can do that by heading over to our Patreon page and signing up there. It's actually free to join. It's free to sign up and I do put out unique and exclusive content to Patreon. However, everything's free, but if you do want to donate monthly, you can do that as well. That option is available to you and I just wanted to make you aware of that. Or if you would like to just give a one-time donation to the channel, there's links below in the description where you can do that as well. All donations are appreciated but never required. But anyway, if you're not subscribed, I would absolutely love to have you here and be a part of the channel and ask you to hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button and that tells YouTube to send this very important message out to more people. But thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next one.